LeBauer Park will soon become home to a monument unlike any other, a memorial to Jewish women of the Holocaust, the first of its kind in North Carolina, will stand here in Carolyn's Garden. It will be a place for remembrance. It will also be a place for education. To create a Holocaust memorial in this beautiful garden space would add powerfully to the importance of the celebration of Carolyn LeBauer's life and commitments. Her indomitable spirit would be so aptly represented by these women who stood up in the only way that they had available. I saw a photo of a group of women, five generations of women, right before they were murdered by the Nazis. You see the, the woman in the middle, the matriarch, she was asked to strip and then she, she was told to take off her clothes and she was standing there with those boots on and looking straight at us. Then next to her, you see her daughter and, this, and then the littlest one is this woman's 10-year-old child. I saw in this all of kind of the um, parts of educating on the Holocaust, remembering women, genocide of the, we the most powerless in our societies is women and children. And the monument will stand it will be in bronze. The figures will be about five feet, five and a half feet tall. And you will, the viewer will be asked to actually look at the women through the eyes of the camera. And it's going to be a camera of the type that was used during that day. And it seems like a little thing to do that you're actually looking through something at a sculpture, but you are bearing witness. It is, you're physically doing something. And I think that's what art education is about. Right now you're seeing it very small, so it's a little bit more um, un unfinished. I call it a study. So the from this, it, it gets blown up digitally into f like a foam pieces that are kind of, you know, a, it's kind of straight foam pieces of the shape. Okay. Comes into my studio, and then I paint the liquid clay on it, and then I start, start re-sculpturing it. With just a, a little flick of your knife, you can change the expression. So my challenge was is that in the photograph, I don't have a three-dimensional, you know, I don't have a model. So I've been taking groups of women, and they've been coming to my studio, and we've been photographing them arm in arm. So I've invited Shirley Fry, I've invited Sylvia Birkenhamel, and Marilyn Chandler, and um, Judy Magair, and Shelley Wiener, who is a Holocaust survivor. I've, in, I've invited them to come and pose. Um, as these women. These women are also serving as my models and as I look at the way they're posing and how their emotions, I'm also being affected by it. This is not just about Jewish women, it's about all women that have experienced hatred. It's history that we have to teach. We'll also be doing workshops. Um, we're talking with Ann Parsons from UNCG and Elon College. Uh, we have a scholar in residence, David Crow. And we started a nonprofit called Women of the Shoah Placemaking. Art is a voice, a monument that speaks about injustice and women and that brings together the community is, is a wonderful thing to have in Greensboro. And the woman who refused to take off her boots show that we each can have a way to stand up and resist that which is insufferable intolerable and inhumane. It truly speaks volumes for the power of human resistance to forces of evil and injustice and it helps us all, each of us, understand that we each have the power to find our voice and translate that into actions and deeds. Over the next several months, we're going to be following the progress of the monument and we'll be sharing it with you right here. We'll also be sharing stories from advocates and Holocaust survivors. You can get involved yourself by going to womenoftheshoahjp.org.